Five years ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, a giant cooking arena, a kitchen stadium. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a to realize his dream, he first secretly started selecting the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. The Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where you will meet the master chefs from around the world and their artistic creations. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! Harajuku, Tokyo. If memory serves me right, this area, leading fashion trends in Japan, was once a quiet high-end residential area. The Washington Heights, a condominium housing foreigners and U.S. military officers. It was in this part of town that a restaurant leading Tokyo-style Chinese cooking was established in 1961. You're probably familiar with shark fin soup with egg and crab fuyong, sweet and sour pork with pineapples. This is the restaurant that invented these recipes. 38 years since opening its doors, it now has 1,005 seats. Many big names in post-war Japanese history have frequented this establishment. It is an establishment in the true sense of the word. And the chef who will be carrying on their tradition into the next generation is this man. He enjoys using many different fruits, giving birth to new recipes at this old restaurant. A man of skill, coordinating all their kitchens. I wish to taste his original creations myself. Today's challenger, a chosen torchbearer of Tokyo-style Chinese cooking. From Nangokushuka in Akasaka, head chef Makoto Osada. Osada stepped into the world of cooking when he was 20. Since then, for 24 years, this man has stayed with this top-notch kitchen, a true thoroughbred. I sincerely wish to maintain the great traditional flavors and style of this restaurant while also challenging many areas of cuisine with a special attention to fruit. And that's how I feel. Osada's creations are emblematic of Tokyo-style Chinese cooking, which is what the restaurant is known for. His unique use of fruit makes the dishes special. So now, Osada, I long to taste the flavors that have attracted many prominent names in Japanese history. I'll be fired up. I'll do my best. Tokyo, Chuka, no, Ganso, Tomo, Yubeki, Ano, 
南国歯科がついに挑戦者を送り込んでまいりました1960年代のインテリたちが魅了されたその味を再現してもらおうではありませんかさあ皆さん大きな拍手でお迎えください赤坂南国歯科料理長おさばまこと Entering Kitchen Stadium, the head chef of the restaurant that's led the way in Tokyo style Chinese cooking. Opened right after the 64 Tokyo Olympics, it soon became the favorite of Japan's movers and shakers. Some of the men who made it happen, Osada's predecessors looking on, they'll see their flavors recreated today. Yeah. Yes, I'll do my best. Yes. それでは最先端のイタリアンを作り続けているうちの鉄人を登場させましょう一人だけ呼びがえるがいいアイアンシェフメイキングソロアセントのキッチンスタディアムカムズヨーアイアンシェフイタリアンマサヒココベイ The Prince of Pasta Kobe developing and honing his pasta making skills at Italy's Enoteca Pinchiotti. Since then, he's satisfied discerning Italian cuisine gourmets from around the world. While the three other Iron Chefs have struggled in recent matches, Kobe's been on a roll. Can he keep it going? Nangoku Shika という名前にちなみ、今回は南の海からテーマ食材を取り寄せました。中国のお祝いごとには欠かせない巨大な海の長老。それでは発表します。今日のテーマは。これです今日のテーマは30年ものの異性An exciting cross cuisine battle today. Challenger Osada, the head chef of the restaurant that leads Tokyo style Chinese cuisine. His dishes will give us a glimpse back to the 60s. And Iron Chef Italian Kobe with giant lobsters, the biggest we've ever had in Kitchen Stadium. We are set to get it on. On a kitchen! Bang a gong, we are on. And Kobe sprinting up to the ingredient so stand. So huge! And as always, the first one up there, and Osada taking his time to get up there. No this sense of urgency at the outset for the man who's the head chef of Nangokushuka. And amazing, just look at the size of these lobsters. <laughs> Kobe can't believe it. Yeah, these are from Tasmania near Australia. And they've and been the, around a long time, yeah, too. Yeah, the larger ones get around 30 years old, so. Well, they'll be going out in style today, and the program notes say that they cost about 400 bucks each. That's right. Hey now. And they weigh about uh, nine pounds or more for the bigger ones. All right, now the Iron Chef, a couple of thrusts in with the knife, not easy over there. And the challenger, he's having a tough time too. A lot of resistance being put up by that one. Kusan, Go ahead, Ota. I asked Iron Chef Kobe to tell me what he really thinks about today's theme ingredient, and he exclaimed, what is this? I can't even get my knife into it. Well, he's, <laughs> he's got that one on the chopping block, and he won that one. <laughs> and now some parts from the first disassembled lobster are in a pot of boiling water. Here, wow. the challenger. That, that is a challenge there. Osada well, under control out of the gate, and that chopped up section now into boiling water for a broth or soup? Yeah, I think so, because he's using the heads. Okay, a soup. Oh, it yeah. looks so good. And now let's introduce our guests for this giant lobster battle. First, actor Tsurutaro Katoka. Hello, nice to be here again. Now, Katoka-san, you ever had this giant lobster before? No, never. This is my first time to see ones this big. All right, and uh, which do you like better, Chinese or Italian food? Oh, that's tough. I like Chinese food, and I like Italian food, too. Both? Yes. All right, well, you'll get to decide which one does justice to these lobsters today. All right. And we also have actress Naomi Hosokawa. Thanks for coming in. Well, good evening. So nice to be here. Hosokawa-san, mm. you've had 30-year-old lobsters, these giant lobsters yes. before, right? Of course not. It's my first time to see such huge ones. First time for yeah. you? Yeah. All right. Now, lobster, it's good raw, sashimi, or boiled or grilled. How do you like it? What's your favorite for lobster? Oh, I just love lobsters and prawns. And? Um, so I love any kind of cooking. Anything goes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boiled raw, bring it on. <laughs> well, how about a raw lobster sorbet? I think I can handle that. <laughs> All right, well, who knows? Could get it today. At any rate, glad you can make it today. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. And our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Always a pleasure. 
Go. Yeah, I asked Challenger Osada what he thinks about the quality of the lobsters today, and his response was, wow, this is much better than the normal stuff you get. This is going to be awesome. All right. And upstairs in the royal box on the Challenger side, men from the Challenger's restaurant, retired, former head chefs, very much respected. This is Suzo Iwaki, former head chef, who was the restaurant's third head chef. And this is Takahisa Kubota, the fifth head chef in the restaurant's history. Moving right along, here's head chef number six, Sadao Kubodera. And also upstairs are the current head chefs from the various Nangokushuka branch restaurants, all in full force today to see their man Osada battle in Kitchen Stadium go. Talking with the challenger about his plans for today, he tells me that he wants to serve dishes that speak for their tradition of flavoring perfected for the Japanese palate. I want the tasters to enjoy the flavor of the good old days, he says. He was very calm and just enjoying himself. Well, I'm looking forward to that. You know, and speaking of uh, Nangokushuka, yeah. they invented menus like shark fin soup with crab brains, uh, the lettuce and fried rice. Oh, yeah. I I remember having these and enjoying them when I was growing up. <laughs> Doc, a child of the 60s, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> you, you had these when you were a kid? <laughs> By the way, Katoka-san, you been to their restaurant? Mm, yes, I have. I remember going there for a party related to a movie that I was in. I went there with the director, Yasuhiko Obayashi, uh -huh. and the scriptwriter, Taichi Yamada, to enjoy their festive dishes. I uh -huh. think it was a restaurant in uh, Harajuku. You went to the home restaurant. Yeah. Fukuzan, go. I just found out what the challenger added to his rice cooker, dried shrimp, besides the rice and water. And he says he's using this recipe to create their specialty lettuce in fried rice, and that adding dried shrimp when boiling the rice is the key to this dish. Sounds good. Oh. Okay, I mm. see. So they don't put them in later then. They do it first. Oh, right. Huh. And Fukuzan, take it. A moment ago, you'll remember that the challenger had a green plate with raw lobster meat on it. Right. To that, he has added more ingredients, which include salt, sesame seed oil, exo sauce, and mustard. He mixed these together, put them on top of the lobster, and then dropped the whole thing into the steamer. Steaming. There. That's right. As we see on the replay. Okay, and these lobsters, you'll notice, have so much they meat do. on them. Yeah, the chefs have got to be happy with this. Oh. Normally, with lobsters, Look the that. amount of meat is quite small, right. being relative to the size of the shell, right? It sure is. Yeah, yes, so there's it's, a it's, ton it's, of meat with these giant 30-year-old exactly. lobsters. Kusan. Take it. I asked Iron Chef Kobe if he'd changed his mind about today's ingredient, and he said, well, I'm going to use them more like Omar lobsters in European cuisine, although Omar lobsters would be sweeter than normal ones. A European approach for sweeter lobsters, but I wonder now if these giant ones actually do have the sweet meat. Now on the Iron Chef side. You'll notice this is Kusan. definitely a sauce in action. Go ahead. Yeah, a quick look at what the Iron Chef has filled with this pot with shows olive oil, garlic, red chili pepper, squid, stonefish, and chopped lobster. All right, olive oil and garlic, getting right down to the basics of Italian cooking. And now on the other side, Osada has already used exo sauce, so both chefs sticking to the fundamentals of their respective cuisines. Fukuza, Go. The bowl with the uh, red liquid in it, uh, this right? one here. Yes. Yeah, it has uh, sugar, water, ketchup, Worcester sauce, uh, vinegar, and red food coloring in it. Okay, well, this is pretty basic. These are the things that you first mix together when you're making a sauce for sweet and sour pork or things okay, like that. Okay, and color and consistency, dock, key elements of the sweet and sour sauce? Yeah, exactly. Okay, but normal for pork. Go ahead. Yeah, now I see on the challenger side that they're preparing some pineapple over here. Here, here he goes. Oh. Okay, yeah, this is it. Now, they were actually the very first ones who added pineapples in the sweet and sour pork in Japan. Yeah, I never knew that. that. Yeah, that, that's a fact. Yeah, and there are two types. There are those who absolutely love it and those who are like, no way pineapple should yes. be part of sweet and sour pork. <laughs> So, but today's theme's not pork, nope. so we'll see yeah. what happens. I'm not sure how he's going to use it. Sweet and sour lobster. Uh huh. Oh, <laughs> Sweet and sour lobster. Why not? Tacky. <laughs> that, that won't sound good in Japanese. Suevi. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. not a good name. Oh, okay. You got a point there. Yeah, but it's not impossible to make, though. I suppose it could happen. Fukuzan. Go ahead, Ota. Uh, Iron Chef Kobe talking about the flavor of these lobsters says usually bigger lobsters and prawns are not sophisticated flavor-wise, but these could be different. I won't know until I cook them, but I'm starting to drool. Okay, a little <laughs> bit in the dark himself, and here the prince of. Oh, uh, there we go. Yes. You're right. Yeah, pasta, yes, pasta yes, yes this will be pasta dough. There's semolina flour, eggs, and olive oil in this. All right. Okay. We'll wait to see what type of pasta Kobe makes and later how he's going to finish it, incorporating today's theme, these giant lobsters. Lobster and pasta should work. Oh, oh, oh look at that. We've got, a, we got a lobster over here, a giant one. Oh, look at this. It's so huge. Up close, you can't oh. believe how big this oh. thing is. And these are actually smaller uh. in comparison to uh. the ones the chefs are using. Oh, it's small? I would say these are the medium ones of the batch. Are you yeah. kidding? Oh, no, I, I really think so. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like Giant lobster. They got that name right. <laughs> Can't believe how big this thing is. Wow, there must be enough meat on this lobster to feed all of us several times over. These are actually smaller compared to the ones the chefs are using. Small? Oh. I'd say these are the medium ones of the batch. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, I, 
I think so, yeah, I really do. Unbelievable giant huge. lobster. They got that name Squeeze right. On. Yes. Yeah, on the Iron Chef side, he's been simmering some lobster meat for some time in a pan, and when I asked him about it, he explained that by simmering lobster carefully for a long time, you take out the moisture, hmm. which basically means that you condense the sweetness and the aroma of the meat. He tells me this is a trick to making good lobster broth. Trick of the trade. There you go. And some tomato sauce and paste going in. So this is like seafood soup in Italian cuisine. I think he's making it for, for something along All right. those lines. Okay. Yeah. Is that a common dish, Doc? Yeah, it's actually very popular. Fukuitan! Yes. I was able to talk to one of the former head chefs of the Challengers restaurant about their sweet and sour pork, and he told me that in China, in the old days, they used pickled scallions. He says, we, however, chose to use pineapple, which would have been a luxury back then, right. to add a sense of high class to it. The taste suits the Japanese palate very well. Sometimes we also add diced apples. Oh, mm. really? Okay. All right, well, they were the first to go with pineapple, and then copied by most everybody else. <laughs> And here now, zooming in a close-up of what will be Osada's sweet and sour dish. And now we are back on Iron Chef Kobe's side. And the one at the bottom, it looks oh. like it's been opened, like the whole piece is kind of split open, right? Look yes. at the size of that. Yes, unbelievable. And applying some kind of paste. Yeah, it looks like it's got a lot of herbs in there, doesn't it? But how is he going good. to use these? Hmm, it's a decidedly oh, European that, approach. We're so bold. No <laughs> doubt about that. Go. Let me describe what the Iron Chef has here. There is a layer of paper beneath this with a layer of ham under that. So ham, then a layer of paper, then boiled lobster on top of that with bacon and a layer of paste, which is a mix of tarragon, rosemary, sage thyme, minced prawns, a blend of herbs and spices in paste form spread over this layered creation back to you. Wow. Mm. Okay, That's this good. is something we have never never seen from Kobe before. No, I'd have to say this is probably an original, one of his own ideas. Possible there's something similar to this at Anoteca Pinkyori? I don't think that's probable. A Kobe original? Mm, oh. I'd have to say so. At least, you know, the the bacon, though, it will match well And with on this. the outside is raw ham. Yeah, oh. you're wow. right. So the lobster being rather subtle in raw flavor. Okay, so yeah, perhaps so. with this, he's adding some saltiness with the uh, with this and the other items. Right, with that one there, exactly. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. When I inquired about this dish we're talking about, Iron Chef Kobe said, this is an original recipe I just thought of today, giant lobster and ham sausage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sausage? It's a Kobe I mean, original. <laughs> it must wow. be. I've never heard or seen of such a thing. Now it looks here like the challenge has got one done already. Wow, oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah, this looks great, doesn't it? So it's a sweet and sour lobster after all. Yeah, it doesn't really, <laughs> you know, click as <laughs> when you say it. But Just it as good. long as it clicks in your mouth. Yeah, but <laughs> there's no pork in there, but it's going to taste similar to that, so. Go. Yeah, more more comments from the chefs in the Royal Box on okay. the use of their fruit, uh, their sweet and sour pork. Quote, the balance of salt, vinegar, and fruit is absolutely critical. You miss it even by a little bit, it'll taste awful. It may sound simple or plain, but ours is not like any that you'll taste anywhere else. It's so good, everyone should come in and try it once, then you'll know what we mean. <laughs> All right, and while theirs may be copied, maybe the cooks at other places can't find that critical balance. They don't know what they're looking for. Okay, now look at the Iron oh. Chef here. And this is the uh, fat netting he's yeah, working he's with? Yeah, he's wrapping it with fat, so he'll be grilling this definitely. All right, he wow. said this is his giant lobster and ham sausage, Iron Chef Kobe style. Whoa. So profound, look at that. <laughs> yes, it looks so good. But it is a monster of a sausage. Mm. And now looking at the challenger, Osada working the rice over there. With mm. eggs? He added eggs as well. Oh, what hmm. else did he add there? But the order of the step, step somewhat puzzling. Take it. The rice the challenger is mixing here on this side that you're watching, this is the rice from the rice cooker that he added dried shrimp to, to which he has also added eggs. All right, we got it. Okay, so if you do this first, it's easier to make the fried rice nice and fluffy. Oh. Hmm. oh. Technically speaking, the rice grains will be coated by the eggs, okay. right? Okay. And then therefore, that'll prevent the rice grains from sticking together too tightly to each other. Oh, coating the rice with egg first. Right, exactly. And then put it in the frying pan, or, or wok, rather. I think this is actually the best way of making fried rice, and judging from the color, they call it like a golden fried rice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what the Iron Chef is mixing in this copper bowl with a whisk is jus de scampi and egg yolks. And jus de scampi, let's define, what, what's that one? Basically, it's just a sauce of lobster, okay. so this would be a, a lobster soup. Okay. Oh, look at this. Huh. All right, Osada's pre-treated rice into the preheated wok. Oh, fried rice. Fried rice. Bringing heat to bear on that one, the rice coated with beaten eggs before being thrown into the wok and into the fire. Now, this is also a specialty of their menu. It's uh, quite popular. Yes. I always like watching this. Chinese cooking is so dynamic. Yeah. The way they cook it, so intriguing. Now, you see the color there? Golden fried rice, like we mentioned. Go ahead. Yeah, about this fried rice, the challenger says, since I'm frying this using only the moisture of the eggs, it won't be greasy at all. Oh, yeah. Right, huh. no sign of any greasiness. Yeah. Mm. 
And also it's got lettuce, right? So it's going to be very refreshing. Oil-free, just the taste, the pure taste of the ingredients, and nice and fluffy, as, and as you said, refreshing. And what's more, this is using rice that was just cooked. Ah, oh, yeah, that's so right. it's, that's you know, right. very, very fluffy. Usually if you try that, it ends up quite sticky or gummy. Yeah. I'm going to try this one. By the way, where's the lettuce? First. Uh, I know what you mean, but don't worry, it'll show up. You're clued in as to how they do this, right? Uh, not really, but look at the Iron Chef. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the lobster soup, some of it in here, in this one? Squeeze on. Go ahead. You can see the Iron Chef working on this dish. What he's done is he's taken the meat from the body and the legs and combined it with the brains of both the giant lobsters and regular lobsters and is now stir-frying that together. Mm. All right, thanks, Ota. And he's also added brandy to that as brandy. well. Brandy. Wow, it looks so good. Mm. Yeah, my stomach is starting to make some noises here right now. I'm, I'm usually not like this. <laughs> I envy you guys. You know, you guys get to eat later on. Yeah. All right, and now he has poured it into this one. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, now, I could be mistaken, but I think this is a pasta sauce. Oh, yeah, look this one for pasta. Good. I could be wrong, but... All right, but Squeeze a possible on. pasta sauce in progress. Go! I asked the Iron Chef what the giant lobster brains tasted like, and he said the flavor is more sophisticated than I thought. With much more great aroma, my dishes today are going to be fantastic. All right, very sophisticated flavor, says Kobe. Olive oil in hand, and he's coating the pan there. And now on the challenger side, Osada returning what? the fried he's rice to the wash. He's frying Still it fried. again? Doc? Uh, what he's going to do is he's putting it back, and this is where you add your other okay, elements. there it is. Yeah. Oh, the lettuce okay. added here. A two-step frying process. And you know, lettuce is very tricky. You cook it even a bit too much, you just totally you destroy just the texture. Just fried it a little right there, too. Yeah, that's mm. the very last Only item. about 10 seconds there. Yeah. Oh, wow. As we check it out on the replay Squeeze coming on. here. Yes, go ahead. It's exactly as Hattori-san said to be, to account for the difference in cooking time. He added lettuce only at the end and cooked the dish twice. All right. You no know, fried rice, it looks very simple, but it's actually one of the most intricate if you want to get it totally perfected. Okay. You mm. see a lot of bad ones around, actually. All right. <laughs> and now here's the Iron Chef's lobster ham sauce. Sausage, his own recipe. Yeah, I think he'll be probably sticking this into the oven after this. Okay, and some oh. flavoring from the fat netting to be absorbed into the body of the sausage. And ham should certainly be cooked crispy on the surface. And remember, he has bacon in it as well. well here we go wow. with the pasta. Ah, the dough is ready. Yeah. yeah now, I okay. wonder what sort of pasta he's going to be making today. Okay, well, it can't be ravioli if he's going to go with that lobster meat and brain sauce. Look, yeah. Maybe look for a spaghetti or and a longer type of pasta. You'll notice here he's making it quite okay. long. Okay, and oh, Challenger yeah, Osada so back with him, and maybe Yota's got something on this one. Squeeze on. Yes. Yes, while the Challenger is scooping the excess froth off the surface of this, let me tell you what's in it. Chanton soup and lobster heads boiled and strained with a little salt and Chinese seasoning. All right, this one looks great, and you saw him with the taste test there. Okay, I think I've got this this one. Okay. I, if he's using this with like crab brains, mm -hmm. I think he's probably going to be adding shark fin as well. Ah, yes. Oh, so with crab yeah. brains, it'll be more of a bright orange. Oh, yes, I've seen that before. Go! Yes, while the challenger is scooping the excess froth off the surface of this, let me tell you what's in it. Chanton soup and lobster heads boiled and strained with a little salt and Chinese seasoning. Mmm, this looks great, and you saw him with the taste test. Okay, I think I've got this one. Okay. If he's using the crab brains like this, I think he'll probably be adding shark fins as well. All right. Ah, yes. With yeah. crab brains, it'll be a bright orange. Though. Oh, yes, I've seen that before. I could be wrong, but... Uh... No, no, Doc, you, you've <laughs> been on top of it so far today. Cousin. Yes. Yeah, before this soup was poured into this porcelain bowl, there were scallions, white sesame seeds, pepper, and hot chili sauce in the bottom of it. Those ingredients were already in the bowl before he poured in the soup. Mm. Huh, so this one's gone in a different direction. Yeah, and I'm guessing probably this is a finished dish. Now. Okay, and the notes also say another popular dish at, at their place is shark fin soup with Squeeze crab on. brains, egg foo young. Go ahead. Yeah, I inquired more about this soup, and the challenger explained that it's called sulatan. In 1970, when they had the Osaka Expo here in Japan, ethnic food became popular, especially this soup, which was really popular back then. Now he says, I've heard the boom is coming back. Sulatan sounds like that Neil Diamond song from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> now this soup is originally from around Beijing or still what they call in culinary terminology Peking. Hmm. Ah. And it has pepper and vinegar at the bottom. And some decorative touches. Yeah, and the tail changes color. Mm -hmm. oh, now look yeah, at the Iron Chef. Good. Tagliatelle, that's the name of this pasta that he's making. Tagliatelle. Huh. Yeah, that's the thin and long ones. Oh. It's like the, the flat oh. kishimen noodles from uh, Nagoya. That's right, right. yeah. Kishimen. Kishimen. Fukuzan. Go ahead. Yeah, talking a bit more about the sulatan soup on the challenger side, he doesn't have lobster meat in that yet, and when I mentioned that, he said, I'm not going to add any. The soup huh. itself, full of lobster flavor and aroma, is what I'm presenting. All right. Okay. So don't go fishing around for any chunks of lobster meat. They won't be there, but the essence of its flavor will. Now, if we can get a shot of the challenger now, by looking at the ingredients he's putting together, I've been thinking about this, and okay. they're famous for their shark fin and crab brain soup, right? right? 
So perhaps maybe this is actually a lobster version of that. That's that's what I'm kind of thinking right now. Okay, and he's I'm working on that. Sure, but, huh. A lobster and shark fin soup. I think that would go over well. Go. And now 15 minutes left in the battle. Oh, yeah. And now Osada's extended family upstairs in the royal box ratcheted up. The challenger from Nangokushuka, the restaurant that's the leader in Tokyo style Chinese cooking. Osada, the head chef there. And this, yes, the Iron Chefs, I believe, that, right, the giant lobster bacon ham sausage. Check that one out. Oh, I like the thought. He used the head and tail to decorate it. Looks like a lobster tail almost. You know, I'm very impressed with how the tail came out on that. Right, the same color. Now, wait a sec, this this isn't going to fit in the oven like this. Uh, the oven? Is this finished? He didn't put it in, did he? Not that I was aware of. Well. Maybe he thought that would harden the meat too much. But just by frying it, do you think it's cooked all the way through the center? I know what you're saying, yeah. Huh. Oh. Looking at it here, almost positive he won't put it in the oven like this. Okay, now mm. back on the challenger side, on. go. Yeah, the challenger has another soup over here in a wok that he's working on, which he's added lard to a broth that he made from lobster shell. All right, that right there. So he put that in then. Yeah, I saw that, what was that? So that's gotta be a soup then, definitely. Oh yeah, okay, see some shark fins going in oh, now. Yes. Uh, All right, sorry. shark fin, some kind of a shark fin soup there. Now in front, there was some, an orange item. Here yeah, it is. Here we go, there. I think he'll be adding this at the very end. Wow. All right. Kuzan? Yes. Yeah, let me tell you about this bright red, or I guess it's actually more of an orange. Anyway, this dish was made by combining egg yolks and crab eggs. Perhaps the colors from the crab eggs. Back to you. Okay, well, that's actually very good. Yeah. Oh, All right, Kobe side moving in on some lobster meat. It's kind of like a carpaccio in form, isn't raw. it? Raw. How interesting. Sort oh, of raw. Sort of raw, that. some raw, some boiled combined. Hmm. Yeah. I see, I see sauce over it. Yeah. Very simple that. looking. An appetizer? Oil. I think oil. so, yeah. All right, now swinging back to Osada's side, one of the most popular dishes on their menu, shark fin soup with crab brains, and we're going to have that one right here, right now. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Go. Yeah, let me just confirm once again the ingredients in the lobster shell soup from the beginning so far is combined large shark fin, uh, salt, sugar, let's see what else, snow crab meat, shrimp, and uh, lobster meat minced in the food processor. He's also added the orange egg yolk and crab eggs mixture while stirring gently. Thanks, shark oh. fin, crab, and lobster. Now, as you cook this, this becomes a very bright orange. Yeah. I just I love like this. That. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm a mm. big fan too. Fukuzan, take it. Yeah, an interesting side story that uh, given to me by the third generation chef of the Royal Box about their shark fin and crab brain soup. He said, I remember Sadaharu Oh, the Japanese home run king, liked this so much that he used to come to our place just to have this soup. Uh -huh. Well, I tell you, 868 home runs can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and the soup was well worth the travel, I bet. You can only get it at their place. And you know, it is so thick. Yeah, it's very, very thick. I mean, this one here, you, you think soup, you'd never imagine this. It is so thick and oh, so powerful exactly. looking, this dish. Yeah, yeah no, good. I agree. Totally, look at that. Mm, All right, go. three minutes to go. The battle of the giant lobsters. No, not the lobsters going at it, but the men preparing them. Challenger Osada, very collected the whole way. It's all right, Dai Jobu, he just says right here, telling the folks upstairs, cheering them on, he's got things totally under control, Kuzan. go. Yeah, I asked the challenger about this soup that uh, Saraharu O loves so much, and he said, this dish has been popular from the beginning since the restaurant first opened, even though back then, shark fin was rare and expensive. You can't talk about our restaurant without mentioning this dish, you must try it. Absolutely, mm. and here it is. Oh. The challenger sounding full of confidence. Meantime, the Iron Chef here pouring from one pot to another okay, on this one. Seafood soup here. Okay. Oh, That's a yes. deep broth taken from the lobsters. This should be wonderful. Oh, oh. check that out. Katokasan, uh -huh. different approaches, but don't you think their soups could be key to the outcome of this battle today in the giant lobsters? Oh, yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Oh, Hattori-san. Oh, no, it's not a carpaccio. No. <laughs> uh, here we go again. After pouring <laughs> olive oil, this comes on. Great. Oh, but this is a great idea. I never even thought of this. Fukuzan. Go, big fella. Yeah, this soup you're, you're talking about by the Iron Chef contains olive oil, garlic, red chili pepper, uh, squid, stonefish, lobster meat, ginger, tomato paste, and water, which were all strained and added to the scampi prawn broth. And now he has poured that mixture over raw lobster and olive oil. Oh, my. Oh. What a luxurious broth here from the Iron Chef. This oh. is going to be so thick. Oh, it sounds so a great Good. job here of maximizing the lobster's flavor, my opinion. Yeah, I agree totally. Yeah. It wasn't a carpaccio, mm. not to be. The lobster meat yeah, raw, soaking in the rich, warm broth. And now a minute to go, the final 60 seconds to take us home. The giant lobster battle, Chinese versus Italian cuisine, Osada versus Kobe. And is the challenger trying to add one more? Go! Yeah, I wondered when the Iron Chef was going to boil his pasta, and he said, don't panic, I'm going to start right now. Fresh pasta doesn't take that long to boil. Starting his pasta in the last minute? No, 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 no. He, it was on boil already. He's getting it out now and into the frying pan with the sauce and now in motion over to the stove. Yeah. 
Oh, cool. yeah. hey now, look at that. Yeah. Boy, it looks like a carbonella, doesn't it? It does. It looks great. And now, less than 30 seconds to go. How do you like these tagliatelle noodles up close with the lobster brain sauce covering them? And now, more sauce added. And Kobe continuing to work the sauce well into the noodles. The Prince of Pasta answering the bell once more. And here, the challenge of sweet and sour lobster. Sue Ebby causing some ripples of laughter earlier. But the panel might be all smiles for another reason after they taste it. The Iron Chef scrambling to the very end. The pasta being unloaded and placed right in the final seconds of the battle, just barely making it. And that's it, the cooking's done, the giant lobster battle is over! How did your dishes turn out? Um, well, I did my very best for the day. But you look yeah. satisfied, you're smiling, are you confident uh, about winning? No, no. Come on, you can tell me. Well, that's just a result. I'll leave that to the judges. All right. Yeah. How was it? Uh, I've never used this ingredient, you know. I never even touched one before. It was challenging. Yes. But you're confident? Am I confident? Yes. I think I was bold enough today. I think you'll enjoy my dishes. Okay. Yes. Challenger Osada is offering four dishes. First, lobster and shark fin soup, a rearranged version of one of the most popular dishes at his restaurant, shark fin and crab brain soup. The aroma of lobster is accentuated in this one. Second, sweet and sour lobster. The sourness is balanced nicely by calculating the sweetness of the fruits. It's what this head chef does best. Tasters will also get to enjoy the texture of lobster meat as well. Steamed lobster salad, thinly sliced daikon radish, and crunchy wafer-thin mushrooms create a splendid new texture. The saltiness of piton, Chinese black eggs, adds a nice touch to the salad. Last is lettuce and fried rice with hot and sour lobster soup. Simple looking fried rice, yet a true masterpiece, not oily at all, and demonstrating the height of Osada's wok skills. The lettuce's crispy texture and the body of the lobster meat match well in this dish. The soup, based on a lobster broth, is also superb. The experience is further heightened by tasting the soup and fried rice together. Iron Chef Kobe also has four dishes. First, lobster hors d'oeuvre, three flavors. Tasters will first be welcomed by the aroma of lobster in the cracker. They'll then move on to the marinated lobster, which is perfectly balanced between sweetness and sourness. Number three is a lobster tartare sandwich, another creative offering, combining mayonnaise and fruit. Second is lobster carpaccio, bouillabaisse sauce. The artistically finished seafood bouillabaisse is the perfect platform for enhancing the lobster's natural flavor. Lobster Brain Carbonara. The unexpected match between the sweetness of lobster brain and the spiciness of black pepper makes for a unique dish, one the tasters will long remember. Last, Giant Lobster Sausage, a truly creative dish, reaffirming his status as Iron Chef. The crispy grilled raw ham and the body of lobster match as well. The right amount of fat in the ham helps draw out the flavors of the lobster meat. It's served with a curry-based sauce, surprising for an Italian cuisine chef. The culinary lineage of this chef extends back to the origins of Tokyo-style Chinese cuisine, which came of age in the golden decades of the 60s. Today's challenger, Makoto Osara. He'll go against Iron Chef Italian Masahiko Kobe, whose star's been rising in recent months. Chairman Kaga unveils the theme, dubbed the giant dean of the sea. It doesn't get any better, giant lobsters. Keeping his powder dry and flavors intact, Osara produces a prodigious four dishes. The Iron Chef, no experience with the theme, he too with a stunning set of four. And now, the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today are photographer Tenmei Kano, actress Naomi Hosokawa, actor Tsurutaro Katoka, and fortune teller Kazuko Hosoki. First, the dishes of Challenger Osara. Yes. I know this is pretty orthodox, but I actually arranged our flagship menu and used a lot of lobster for today. Yeah, I know. Well, I can really enjoy the aroma and the texture of really? lobster. I'm a fan of your crab soup, but the lobster soup is also very good, yes. Osada will serve his sweet and sour lobster. Let's hear what they say. 
Well, pineapples and apples, and also a bit of lychee syrup. How should I describe it? It does have a lot of fruit in it, and it is refreshing, but it's also thick in flavor, yes. Well, you see, he's really cleverly used the large pieces of lobster in this. You should have done a bit more to the flavor of the lobster in this, but, uh, well, the sweetness of the lobster and fruit are quite uh, nicely packaged, I think. Very good, I think. I used exo sauce in this dish and just let the lobster absorb that. Now, the daikon radish in this really enhances the texture and the sweetness of the lobster. It's quite uh, soothing and good. Well, this, it's been a while since I had Chinese food this good. Oh, the richness of the flavor and the use of oil and the pitan eggs. Well, I'm speechless. I'd like you to pour a bit of soup over the fried rice. Well, if you'd like to do that, I mean. Well, I like the finish of this rice. Now, for myself, I prefer rice to be a bit firm. I'm enjoying the texture of the grains between my back teeth. Really, eating this is quite a pleasure. As you suggested, I tried it with the soup on the rice. It's just right in terms of flavor. Very nice. This fried rice is much lighter in flavor than it uh, appears, not so overpowering overall, not heavy at all. That's the key to this, I think. Well, I thought he had a solid base in terms of flavoring. And on top of that, he sometimes explored new ground to make some original dishes, the very finely controlled flavors. And now up, the dishes of Iron Chef Kobe. The lobsters were so huge, and I thought they wouldn't be so sophisticated, so I tried to add mm. flavors by other ingredients. Mm -hmm. Now, you'd probably call this a carpaccio, mm. but I accompanied mm -hmm. it with a okay. bouillabaisse sauce. Mm. The lobster meat is still raw, so I can enjoy the natural texture better. Together with the flavors added to it, it's quite good. The sweetness he added to this is so subtle, but it's just right, giving way to the natural sweetness of the lobster. The sauce is what makes this uh, well-calculated dish, I think. Normally for carbonara, you use eggs, but I used lobster brain instead. Uh, is this black pepper in this? Yes. Well, it's pretty pepper. powerful. Well, you know, he's used it quite boldly. It's roughly ground, and as you chew it, you can find that it really matches well with the lobster brain here. I like, I like his bold approach. <laughs> his approach in this dish was to make an aggressive lobster dish. Very powerful dish, I think. I think this is great. I like this kind of dish. He's challenging us, yeah. Okay, here it comes. Kobe will serve his giant lobster sausage. How will this go down? Oh, there's basil and a variety of other herbs along with some butter. Um, I, the outside is crispy while the lobster inside is firm yet tender. And also, I like the aroma very much. The herbs on top are really nice. I'm impressed with the balance of this dish. In all aspects of this dish, I can feel the care you put into it. All the effort, yes. I'm so surprised. Meaning? Meaning it's good. <laughs> <laughs> the flavor of this is so hip. And that's why I can joke about it, like, man, this is bad. But really, it was great. You've come a long way, very energetic. You've got great imagination, and I see your energy and imagination in all your dishes you serve today. I think you're almost there, Kobe. Thank you, sir. Giant lobsters, a giant victory for the winner. The verdict when we return. Well, 
実感いたしましたそれでは発表します Today, Kitchen Stadium seeing what the originators of Tokyo style Chinese cooking were all about through the flavors of their heyday brought forth in giant lobster dishes. And now they await the verdict on their successor, Challenger Osada, carrying the torch first relayed from the 60s. But this is year 00, and Iron Chef Kobe with new dishes continuing to expand the scope of his culinary vision. Then or now, who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Tetsujin Kobe Masahiko! It's the Iron Chef, Kobe doing it once again. He is still on a roll, taking these giant lobsters, first time he's ever worked with them, and nailing them to the wall. Nothing against Osada, but nostalgia doesn't count for much in Kitchen Stadium. You have to create a little more, and the Iron Chef certainly did today. All right, the scores, Kano, 1915 Iron Chef, Hosokawa, 20 to 19 Iron Chef, Katoka, 20 to 19 Iron Chef, Hosoki, 1915 Iron Chef. It washes out a sweep for Kobe. Fundamentally sound, creatively inclined. Today with the giant lobsters, he's got the giant win. Iron Chef Italian, Masahiko Kobe.